you're looking to grow perfect trays of sunflower, you are definitely in the right place. I'm about to give you a full walkthrough along with tips and tricks on how to grow high quality sunflower microgreens every time with no mold and high yields. For the best microgreens content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you get notified every Tuesday when I come out with a new video on microgreens and microgreens business. To be honest, sunflower microgreens are not my favorite to grow and they've given me plenty of problems over the years. They require more effort than most other varieties and if I could do without them in my business, I probably wouldn't grow them. Sunflowers are very popular in the health niche and because that's what my business service is, I have to grow them. There's high demand and I do sell a lot of sunflower microgreens so I've had to force myself to really master the process of growing them. I'm sure you want to improve your sunflower microgreens, so let me take you step by step to show you exactly how I grow mine. It all starts with high quality seed and the seed variety to use is called black oil. I'm not going to go super deep into the seeds in this video because I actually made a whole separate video just on this topic. This being said, it is much easier to grow high quality sunflower microgreens if you're using high quality seeds in the first place. Aside from the seeds and your grow room environment, after that, it's all about your process. Before I jump into my procedure, I just wanna mention that sunflower microgreens may grow better in a grow room that has a higher temperature. So that's something to consider. Nevertheless, I've had no problem growing them in temperatures as low as 68 degrees Fahrenheit and also in temperatures as high as 77 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, the first step in growing your sunflower microgreens is soaking the seeds. This helps to fully activate the seeds, resulting in thorough germination as well as a high germination rate. My trick here is to soak them for only four hours. This is extremely important, and this was a huge game changer when I reduced my soak time down to four hours. It made a world of a difference. Keep in mind that sunflower seeds do float, so you will need some sort of system in place to keep those seeds under the water. If they end up floating to the top, they won't get the full soak effect. I use strainer bags to soak all of the microgreen seed varieties that I do soak. And for the sunflowers, I simply put a brick on top of the bag, that way they don't float up to the surface. Your seeding rate is something that you're gonna have to play around with to really figure out what works best for you. Every seed lot will perform slightly differently, so you might have to change your seeding rate based on your lot of seeds that you're currently using. And don't forget that every farmer has a different grow room and different procedures, so that's why you're gonna have to kind of mess around with your seeding rate a little bit to really dial it in for what works best for you. With this being said, the seeding rate that I've been using is five ounces of dry seeds for each 10 by 20 tray. After soaking your seeds for exactly four hours, you're then gonna drain the water. You can seed them into trays right after draining the water, or you can let the seeds dry off for a few hours, which makes it easy to seed them because they're not wet and won't stick to your container. Now that your seeds are soaked, it's time to start prepping your tray. Each tray is actually two trays, one tray with holes that sits inside a tray without holes. Next, you're gonna add your growing medium. I highly recommend using a potting mix similar to the one that I use, which is called Pro Mix. MP organic. Make sure to spread your growing medium out evenly across this tray and be especially careful to get it into all the corners. If you don't, your potting mix won't be able to hold as much moisture in those areas and your sunflowers will actually get dehydrated and fall over in those spots. Next, you're gonna press the soil down with either a soil press or another tray. That way you have a nice even surface, a flat surface to spread your seeds over. Spread your seeds out as evenly as possible across the tray, and if you're making multiple trays at a time, make sure to try and get the same amount of seeds in each tray that you're making. Next, you're gonna give your trays a nice watering. I used to use the mist setting, but now I actually just use the shower setting. I find that it's faster, more thorough, and more efficient too, because less of that moisture is just evaporating and going into the air. When you're doing this, you want them to get enough water to last them through the whole germination process, but don't oversaturate the soil where you would create an anaerobic environment. Once your trays have gotten that initial watering, you're gonna stack them and then put a weighted tray on top. I use a 14 pound paving stone to add weight to that top tray and I bought them at Lowe's. What this does is it forces the plants to become strong because they have to push up on all that weight and it also gives them something to push up against so they can push their roots down to the soil. 
Otherwise, the seeds can sometimes germinate and sprout on top of the soil, never get rooted, and then they kind of just get dehydrated and die. Stacking trays also helps maintain a dark and damp environment, which is ideal for germination. All right, we're halfway through the process and your seeds are now germinating. So take a second right now to comment below and let me know what's been your biggest issue with growing sunflower microgreens. The more I know about your problems, the better I can help you solve them. Once you see that your sunflower microgreens are pushing up on the trays above, they're ready to be taken out of germination and go under lights. Your germination time will vary based on the temperature in your farm, your seeds, your procedure and all that. But my germination time is between three and four days. Lately, I've been doing three days in germination because if I let them go that extra fourth day, they actually push up so much that the stack of trays falls over during germination. When going under lights, they should look young but healthy and just about every seed should have germinated. What you really wanna see is that high germination rate and little to no mold on any of the seeds or spreading throughout the tray. If you happen to see a little bit of mold in your tray, I would just ignore it for now. It probably won't cause an issue because when you do that first watering, along with the fact that they're now in open air and getting that airflow, chances are the mold will kind of just disappear. Since the plants haven't had water in a few days since you first watered them when you were making the tray, they're going to be thirsty when you first put them under lights. Right after you put them out, give them their first watering from above. That's right, you're going to top water your sunflower microgreens. This will allow the seed hulls to absorb some of that water, weakening and loosening them for easy removal. You're actually going to keep top watering for the first two or three days that they're under the lights. I water once per day in the morning, keeping the soil moist but not completely drenched. Starting on day two or three under lights after the plants have grown a little bit, where they're not too young, where they'll get damaged doing this, you're going to start brushing the hulls off of the trays manually with your hand after each watering. This is how you get the hulls off of the plants and you're gonna do this every day after watering until they're ready for harvest. Nevertheless, most of the seed hulls will fling off after the first one to three days of doing this. I always keep my sunflower trays on the bottom shelf of my grow racks. That way, when I'm brushing off these hulls, they go onto the floor rather than falling into the trays beneath, which could potentially cause problems. Also, if you have multiple stages of sunflower growing at the same time on your racks, you're gonna to wanna to brush off the hulls of the oldest plants first and then make your way towards the youngest plants. The older trays are gonna be cleaner because you've been knocking the seeds off. So you don't wanna start with the younger trays, get your hands all dirty and then go to wipe off the older trays and then get those microgreens dirty. Meanwhile, they're gonna be ready for harvest sooner. Around the third or fourth day that your sunflower microgreens trays are under the lights, you're gonna to switch from top watering to bottom watering. That way your plants aren't wet when it comes time to harvest. Even though you're gonna be bottom watering now, keep on brushing the hulls off after each watering. On the sixth or seventh day that my sunflower microgreens trays are under lights, they're ready for harvest. You should have a similar situation, but this will be determined by the nuances of your grow room and your seeds. At the time I'm shooting this video right now, I've been averaging a yield of about 23 ounces per tray for my sunflower microgreens. Now you know how to grow sunflower microgreens like a pro, but this was a lot of information. Be sure to follow me on Instagram where I'm able to dive deeper into some of these individual aspects I just discussed. Click the video below to know exactly when to harvest your sunflower microgreens, or click the other video if your sunflower microgreens have been falling over. If you like this video, hit that like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video with anybody you think it may help. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.